first of all, good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to the first IHE Delft alumni online seminar of this year. As you know, or many you, of you know, this seminar series on topics selected to suit the interest of alumni and partners, of course, are open to a broader audience. So never hesitate to share the invitation or later the video with your colleagues or person who may be interested. My name is Maria Laura Sorrentino. I work as alumni advisor officer at IHC Delft, and it's my great pleasure to organize and to moderate these events with the technical support of my colleague Vijay. Before I start again, I would like to remind you to stay in silence mode to avoid disturbances, and you are welcome to introduce yourself in the chat, mentioning your name, country, and place of work. After the presentation, remember that you will have time for questions and answers. So I invite you to write your questions in the chat during the talk so I can read them to our guest after he finished his presentation. In the coming days, you will receive by email the, the recorded video and also you can find that video and the previous uh, seminars on the YouTube channel of IHC Delft in the session alumni online seminars. Good. The topic of today, provision of water and sanitation in challenging conditions, experiences in Antarctica, will focus our attention on that continent. We know it is a planet cold and wind this continent and is home not only uh, penguins and other animals but also a growing number of human scientists conducting research in this unique environment. Like all humans, scientists produce human waste which has to be handled in a way so that it doesn't put the pristine environment at risk. The guest speaker of today, Dr. Hector Garcia, is Associate Professor of Wastewater at IHC Delft and will share with us his experiences from the mission he had to the Uruguayan scientific base Artigas on King George Island last April. He was there as part of the team comprising IHC Delft and Technological University of Uruguay experts both alumni that you can see the tree on the picture, who study new ways of water treatment to improve the current sanitation situation by allowing the reuse of water, wastewater. I would like to give the voice to our guest speaker, Dr. Hector Garcia. Hector, please. Yes, uh, good morning or good afternoon or good evening. Thank you, uh, Maria Laura, very much for the introduction. Uh, and also uh, thank you, EJ, for, for organizing this uh, online seminar and welcome to, to everybody uh, to, to participate in, this, in, in today's uh, seminar. Uh, my name is uh, Hector Garcia. Uh, I'm uh, Associate Professor at IHC Delft uh, in the research group uh, of a citywide uh, inclusive sanitation in the uh, water supply sanitation and environmental engineer uh, department. So in particularly the topic that I will be uh, discussing with you, the provision of water and sanitation in, in challenging conditions, the expertise experiences in, in the Antarctic, I would say it's well aligned with uh, with everything that we do mostly at, at our core of citywide inclusive sanitation, that is pretty much finding alternatives for providing sanitation when there are not sewers, right? Uh, in, a, in a decentralized setting, but also in a non-sewer setting. And also linking uh, from uh, uh, our sanitation perspective, if we don't provide good sanitation, we will have water quality issues that will impact our uh, water quality on the drinking water. So the today, uh, we, we will cover both water and sanitation interventions 
in uh, such a different uh, environment that is the the situation that you observe in the in, in the antarctic it's not only cold and windy but also it has other challenges uh, to not, not only to get there but 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 to work there uh, <clears throat> so as maria laura was mentioning this uh, project uh, has been so this mission was a collaboration but there is an ongoing project that uh, is carried out uh, between uh, UTEC. Uh, UTEC is a technological uh, university in, in Uruguay that, that I'm also uh, affiliated there. The Uruguayan Institute of uh, Antarctic, so pretty much the, the country as many others in the world, they have a, a research uh, institute there that is that is located in the Antarctic, and of course uh, the the project is uh, also uh, conducted by by IHG there. So this is a nice uh, combination of uh, institutions that uh, allow to to make this mission and this research possible. So first, I will start describing the, the place. As you can see, the Antarctic is a large and big continent. So and the Uruguayan base uh, is located in the King George Island, as, uh, as you can see in this figure over there. So the way to get there to the island is through the uh, airport that is managed by, by Chile. So, and there you can see at the left, there is the Chilean base and at the back of the slide, the, the airport. The, this picture was taken in, in the winter. It's not the picture that, that uh, we took in our mission there. So at the right, you see the Russian base and at the right in the next bay, uh, you can see the Uruguayan base that the name is in, in Spanish is Base Científica Antártica Artigas. So it's a BCAA. So the way to get there is through the airport, through the Chilean base. It's not airport as you used to, to see an airport. It's more, uh, you know, uh, I would say a very primitive uh, airport, but uh, it's the only way to, <clears throat> to access there. So in that island, there are many other uh, countries that also have uh, research stations. And as you can see in the slide, many countries in the in the close by to the Uruguayan base, the Artigas base. So we can see also that the that Russia has a base, Chile, South Korea, Argentina, China, uh, Czech Republic, Poland, uh, Peru, and, and also Brazil. So there is a nice uh, uh, possibility there of uh, of you know doing research together between different countries. Uh, so this is the, uh, so I'm showing a, a picture there when we were arriving to, to the Antarctic, the mission was carried out a few months ago at the end of the, of the summer in the South Hemisphere. Uh, so the, the Antarctic is pretty much closed uh, during winter time, that is from uh, end of March to, to November. So it, it is only possible to do to go there as a researcher between the, the, the summer in the South Hemisphere between November and, and, and March. So that's so all the uh, things that I will go in, going to show uh, were done in during the summertime. So that's what you will see a little bit of a snow, but but not much because remember it is summer. So there is a, a, our arrival. So we were arriving at the airport that is controlled by, by Chile. So then you see at the left side of the of both uh, of, of the left slide, you can see the Chilean base and they have like a small town uh, over there. Uh, and at the right side is the Russian base. And then from that bay, uh, you can take a boat to, to go to the South Korean base. You cannot go by, by road transport, only by, by boat. Uh, same thing. The right side of the slide shows a different view of the Chilean and the and the Russian uh, bases there. So the as I show you in the first uh, slide, the the Uruguayan base, our our destination, uh, was uh, more to the right side. More uh, if we look on 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 the map, it's more to the to the west of, of the Russian base, but. It, the Uruguayan base can be accessed 
by 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 road transport. So and but uh, you know in the summertime there was not much snow at that time, but in the winter you can imagine that it it snows a lot, so it's difficult to 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 move there by you know by truck or by or by van or by car. So that's what you're seeing in the in the screen is the 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 typical. I mean on, on of, of transportation there in 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 Antarctica is like a snow a snow van or a snow uh, truck. So then uh, upon our arrival to the base, we were uh, picked up by by staff from the Uruguayan base, and we were taken by by that uh, transport uh, to the base. And then you already have a feeling from seeing that picture how the, the roads looks like there. So pretty much there are no roads. Huh? Um, so, and that is why you need some sort of different uh, transport to, to get there. All right, so this is our destination in Antarctic. Uh, this is the Uruguayan uh, base. So it's uh, the, the, the bay it is, uh, is very nice. I would say it's one of the the, on, on that island is, is of the places that I like it the most, uh, not because it's uh, the Uruguayan base, but be, because the bay and the and the landscape in that part of the island is, is really beautiful. So as you can see, that's sort of the different buildings. Each building has a meaning. Also the way that the buildings are distributed uh, in, in a small and different buildings is, you know, because if, if an accident happened, not everybody's in the same building at the same time. And the building that you see at the right side of the picture, the light blue and white, uh, it's uh, pretty much the dorms where, where most of the people live, but not the military staff that they, they stay in, a, in, in separate buildings. So this is now a different view of the, of the base from the, from the other side. This is from the west, the other was from the, from the east, but pretty much it's the same information I, I told you. So here is the project team that uh, were there. So from, from left to right is Beren Lolkema. It's a, a research a laboratory staff from IHE Delft. In the center, it is myself. And at the right is a Miss Alejandra Sabo that is associate professor with uh, UTEC. So that was the team that conducted uh, all the activities there. So, but before going into the, into the technical details, I just wanted to give you a brief uh, view of of the of what we see over there so some sightseeing of the of the antarctic this is a nice glacier that you see right from the from the bay uh, in in the base it's it's at the east side of the of the base and this is the uh, view that you have uh, at the west side of the base it's uh, the, this glacier over there is around 4 kilometers uh, walking distance from there so the landscape is is beautiful. It was uh, summer, so you know it was not much uh, ice and snow, but it still was a decent amount. So this is a sea level, right? Uh, so uh, end of summer sea level. That if there is still a snow and ice there, so that you know that could give you an idea how cold uh, is there. Uh, same uh, views of the glacier at the left and and the right. Mm -hmm. And also in Antarctic, the fauna is very interesting. So we saw many penguins. Of, of course, there are some uh, procedures and regulations. How close uh, can you get to, to, to the animals there for not disturbing the, the local fauna? Uh, and also other type of, of, <clears throat> of fauna we, we saw over there. And I highlighted that uh, with a white circle because it's very difficult to distinguish between the seal and the and and these uh, little stones over there uh, this is a view uh, of what you see actually from the base i, I just uh, run a, a video so you can have a better idea of the of the landscape over there and how things look like over there and and again a picture that that this is the the summer so you can get an idea how how difficult it could be there in the in the winter. So this is the base from the bay, uh, from uh, south to from north to south in this case, and this gives you a better idea of the buildings and 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 of the entire uh, camp uh, over there. All right. So and now not everything was a, a pleasure and a relaxation. We also did some work uh, over there. 
And this is what uh, I would like to, to show right now. So we wanted to do sort of an audit or uh, find out what is the situation regarding water and sanitation. So first things that we did is we bought a, a lot of uh, portable and movable equipment and uh, we took it there. So we were discussing with the uh, people from the base well, well in advance. So to, to find out this equipment like reagents, uh, chemicals, portable uh, equipment for, for conducting sampling and analysis of, of things over there. And then we did a plan. So we wanted first to find out what is the sanitation situation. And then, uh, so in Antarctic, if uh, you are operating a base that uh, on average has less than 30 persons per year, let's say, so you don't need to provide any wastewater <clears throat> treatment uh, in the plant, but at least you need to manage your, your waste, your fecal sludge and your waste by, by means of septic tanks. So on average, this is a small plant in the uh, base, sorry, in the, in the summer, uh, it may receive up to 50 person total combining mil military staff and researchers. But in the winter, there are only eight uh, staff that, that lives there all year round. So on average, the, the base is below 30, so there was no need to, to provide wastewater treatment. Uh, but anyways, there is the interest of the of the country to, you know, it's a very pristine environment. So they wanted to move ahead and find out what is the situation of the septic tanks, what is the pollution of the of the area. Uh, and if things are not properly working or are not, you know, the, the best uh, management practice to, to implement a wastewater treatment system. And that was part of, of, of the objectives of this mission. So we started with a sanitation sampling campaign. So for that, uh, we define different sampling points. There are two slopes in the in the base with the where, where the water flows uh, from the hills to the uh, bay. So and then in that they they, they form two small creeks, uh, and then uh, so and the septic tanks. Uh, are located both at the east and at the side of the base, what I call their line A and line B. And all the septic tanks are arranged uh, following that, that uh, slope. So, and that is where, where we define our sampling points. Eh? Sampling points one, two, and three uh, refers to the septic tanks that I would say that collect the most waste because it's from the dorms where most of the people live, uh, sleep. Then sample four and five are the kitchen, six and seven kitchen. And there is also a restaurant. It's the place where people eat. We have all the meals there. And there is sort of a place for recreation. So no, also a lot of waste is produced there. Uh, six and seven is the laboratory. 10 and 11 is where some of the military dotation live, uh, sleep there. And eight and nine is the gym and the and the laundry. So we, we organize the, the sampling there. So and this is... In this slide, you can see those uh, little creeks uh, that, that I'm mentioning and uh, how the water flow uh, from the, the higher uh, elevation to, to the sea. In the left side, you can see the creek and on the right side, you can, say, you can see the mouth uh, of that uh, small creek into the, into the ocean or into the sea. Uh, this is the other side, the west, uh, sorry, this is the east part. Uh, the line, what we call line B. And here you can see the other uh, septic tanks, how are they organized from the kitchen, from the laundry, from the gym uh, in, in, in these two pictures. And this is another uh, view from, the, from what we call line B, that is the uh, west side of the, of the base with the septic tanks uh, organized in, in that way. Uh, so uh, we, we were taking then samples, so of uh, as we plan right so first we started with the septic tanks from from the dorm and this is you know how the the septic tanks looks there are big tanks of five or ten cubic meters that that pretty much act as a septic tank very simple septic tanks where the sludge uh, is uh, settled uh, and then there is uh, an overflow an outfall for the for the supernatant. Eh? So, and then you can see how the supernatant uh, leave the septic tank. And if we zoom in, so, well, you can see that the treatment is very elementary or there is no treatment at all, just a maceration or just a settling uh, of, of the sludge. And then the, the 
I, I mean the treated, partially treated or untreated wastewater uh, leave the septic tank uh, through the through the overflow, right? And this is in this point is uh, that we uh, where we sample. Uh, so also you can see the runoff of of the septic tanks, and even you can see some green greenish uh, vegetation or things growing there. So that shows that that this may be already a source of a pollution. Mm -hmm. So we uh, took uh, several samples there. For that, we will uh, equip with this uh, sampling device. This is how the septic tanks looks from inside. So we take uh, many samples, we store the samples, and then we took it to the lab to conduct many uh, different uh, physical chemical uh, analysis. Same thing we did in the kitchen. Same. Uh, procedures, same septic tanks that they were providing. In this case, uh, the, the, you know, in, if you have a kitchen, so you may have grease, so you need to have these uh, separators for, for the grease, but the concept of the septic tanks were, were the same. And particularly here, they combine not only the kitchen waste, I mean, the, the kitchen uh, wastewater from the sink huh, that has a high grease content, but also there were a few uh, toilets there. So everything was uh, combined here in the septic tank. Same, same uh, design. And we did exactly the same procedure for collecting the sample, uh, storing the sample. And also in all the septic tanks, we did some uh, uh, on-site measurements, uh, taking sensors to measure pH, conductivity, uh, dissolve oxygen and, and things like that. We did that in every single septic tank. So then we move on into the lab. The lab, it has two different septic tanks, one for the, for the waste that came from the sink, pretty much residuals of traces of chemicals when you wash out things uh, in the lab. And the other is there is a, a toilet in the lab, so the other collect the, the wastewater or the fecal sludge uh, or black uh, wastewater from, from the toilet. So very different type uh, of waste, so very different type of uh, sludge hmm, or wastewater that we collected there. Everything was uh, covered. Another thing I didn't mention, because you know now for me it's a little, <laughs> when you see things uh, on a daily basis, it doesn't uh, ring a bell, but now I'm noticing that it's uh, important that, of course, it's a winter. So in the in the winter, temperatures get really low. So if you see these two cables here, these are to to feed a heaters. So with electricity, because if they don't heat the septic tanks, it will uh, get frozen, right? So that is why this is continuously heated all year uh, all year around. And, and that, that is the same, that, that stands for every single septic tank. Uh, this is from the gym and from the laundry. Also, we sample the, the septic tanks and also uh, over there, as you can see, that's the septic tank. Actually, this one was the, the one that was uh, working the, the best. This, is, this was the best, uh, the best one in terms of, of performance. Mm -hmm. So this is the tank, how we sample the tank. And uh, over there, uh, you can see the, the the outfall here. So, and as you can see, the, the water, the color is a little grayish that of course septic tank does not provide such a great treatment. And that is why the 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 Antarctic Institute wanted to <coughs> su suspect that they could do better. Mm? So we were measuring there with the sensors. And this is the final one, is the military dotation where, where the, the, the staff uh, lives also there is a, septic tank and there is an, an outfall of, of that tank and we did uh, exactly the same. Okay, so that was the, the first, our first goal was to find out what was the situation. No, if Could you please uh, close your microphone please because there is some noise in the, in the audience, thank you. Uh, so the first goal was to find out what, what was the, the status regarding the sanitation. We know that sep it's better having septic tanks than having nothing. Uh, the Antarctic Treaty forced all the bases to have this type of septic tanks, but we can do much better. And that was the idea uh, of doing this, finding out what was this current situation and how can we improve. 
but also we wanted to see the impact uh, in the drinking water or you know or 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 in the in the creeks in in the environment so and also we did a sampling plant just to determine the the water quality of the surrounding so and we uh, Similarly, as we did with for sanitation, we also did for water. And we, but the, the sampling points are a little different. So, my most important uh, one, I would say, was the the creek that 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 creek that I show you, that ran at the east side of the base. The, the this uh, point uh, over here, the, this line over here. This is the creek that start running here and end up in the mouth of the sea. So for that, we define <clears throat> four sampling points. <clears throat> the upstream, upstream of the base, that is this point uh, number one. In the middle of the base, there is already a septic tank over here, as you can see. And, you know, this already may contribute with some runoff from the outfall and there may be some uh, issues here. Then the sampling point three is directly at the outfall of the septic tanks from the dorm. And the sampling point number four is at the mouth of the river. But also we wanted to find out what is the status of the, uh, of the drinking water in the building, so in the water tanks, in the tap water, same in the kitchen. And also we measure, and probably it's better to see in the next slide, the picture during the winter, this is a creek that I was referring before, that this is the dorm, but also we wanted to see the, the quality of the, of the water that they, they are taking to, for, for water supply for drinking water without any treatment. They just pump the water from the lake and, uh, and drink it as, uh, as it is, without any chlorination, without nothing. Here is a very pristine environment, and there is there are nothing here, so you know it's it's relatively safe to to drink the water in that way. Uh, okay, so here are some pictures of the different sampling points from the water. This is uh, upstream of the of the creek, the first point that that we monitoring before upstream of the base. Uh, so there you can see the, the, the sampling point better and how we were sampling. This is second point that there already may be some uh, uh, impact uh, due to the operation of the, of the base. Also, we collect a sample and then we analyze. Then the number three, this was uh, the out, close to the outfall of the dorm. So probably here is where we were expecting to see the you know, major uh, pollution there in this point. So this is the outfall of the septic tanks and this is the runoff and here is where we were sampling. And the final point was over here in the mouth of the of the creek to, to the sea. So here, okay, probably we we were not positive what, what uh, we could expect here. I almost fall down in the creek because it was too windy. So I was happy, this is me, I was happy collecting the two bottles and, and still be dry. That is not a minor thing uh, over there. And there are the little bottles that, that we collected for, for the sample. So this is inside the building. And here I wanted to show you that every building has, uh, or every facility, uh, where there are valves, where there are pipes or whatever, they are equipped with heaters. Eh? Because in the winter, it gets really cold over there and the pipes could get uh, frozen. These are the storage tank. These are the pumping system to provide water from the storage tank to the, to the tap. And also we monitoring the water quality of the tanks. So there are, this is a population of some type of microorganisms that grow there that are, they, they don't have an impact on the on, on, on public health, but, uh, but it still is a little not nice to see that over there. So one of the recommendations that we did is to clean the tanks more often. So we measure all the water quality, we sensor, but also we sample to, to measure later on. Uh, so here is the well the location where we sample from the top in this uh, building in the dorm uh, of the of the place, and also we sample in the kitchen, in the storage tank, in the water tanks, uh, in the kitchen and in the top. And uh, so we also uh, took a few samples of some lakes that was uh, close to the to the base. From this lake, they were not taking the, the drinking water, but anyways, we wanted to characterize that water. And of course, we took the water from what is called the Uruguay Lake. And this is the lake from, from the drinking water is taken. And here you can see there is a, a pump, a submersible pump 
somewhere here. Uh, and, and from there, as you can see in the screen, the, the drinking water is taken by a pump uh, up. And then the water is the, the, the water is then distributed uh, to all the different buildings through these pipes. And here are these uh, boxes that you see uh, in between. These are where the valves are to open and close. And these are uh, also provided with heaters. Uh, if not, in the winter, everything gets frozen. And then you can see the pipes. They have some slope. Uh, uh, so they do the operation of pumping water two times a week. And when the operation is done, they need to empty the tanks. If there is water remaining in the, the, the pipes, huh? they, they need to empty the pipes. If there is water remaining in the pipes, they will get uh, frozen and you know pipes will break. So it's, it's quite challenging. And this, these are the water distribution line. And these are these uh, small boosts where the valves are placed and th that are uh, all the time uh, heated. So here is the location of the pump for, for taking a drinking water. And this is also a, a, a place that we were taking a samples. Of course, we didn't do that. There are professional divers there uh, that uh, went into uh, there and they take a nice samples for, for us to, to analyze. We store some samples, we analyze theirs, another we take it with us to the continent to do more intense physical chemical uh, determinations. So this is the lab, and Beren is uh, carrying out some uh, the analytical determinations there. So this is uh, the, the lab with a nice view uh, of, the, of the dorm. Uh, so and then, yeah, we, we conducted many different uh, analytical determinations. We have cooler to preserve the samples, and we did all the, uh, all the nasty samples. It was very smelly, the lab. Also, we did microbiological determination, total coliform, fecal coliform, and we were able to do uh, everything there uh, in, in the facilities. The lab facilities look very good. All right, and now briefly, I, I wanted to show you some uh, results. Uh, remember, we find out the water quality of the septic tanks and, and of the creeks, pretty much. So we split in two. And I, I will just mention some interesting things. Uh, when we analyze the septic tanks, uh, of course, this is the outfall of the septic tanks. Of course, we find out some a lot of total COD because there is a lot of, uh, of total solids and volatile solids. And of course, in the septic outfall, we find out uh, not only total coliforms, but also fecal coliforms. And, and we find fecal coliforms that is uh, an indication of, of fecal contamination, right? Uh, so, okay, we were expecting to find that in, in the septic tanks and in the, in the outfall of the septic tanks. So th this is in the tank. But also we find some total nitrogen, ammonia, uh, well, of course, COD, total solids, uh, volatile solids, fecal coliforms. As I told you, we also measure pH, conductivity, dissolved oxygen, temperature. We did many different analytical determination. And in, in every single septic tank, so I'm just showing a few in, in the kitchen. So there was some uh, uh, anaerobic of uh, uh, FOG, so fat, oil, and grease, so the pH it makes sense that we find out a low pH, but I will not go into technical issues. In the kitchen also, we find out in the septic tanks, total coliforms and fecal coliforms. Here is combined the waste from the kitchen with the waste from the toilet. So it makes sense to, to have that. And also the COD, the total COD was, was very high uh, over there. Uh, also in the lab, uh, when we were measuring the the waste that was coming from the sink there was not fecal contamination but when we were measuring from the the, the septic tank from the toilet of course there was a fecal a contamination there and same thing from the laundry if we measure the septic tank outfall we find out total coliform but not fecal coliform they were not a toilet there so we didn't see any a fecal contribution there. The, then in the dorms of the of the staff, yeah, of course we we find out a fecal coliform as well. So the conclusions of this uh, determination that of course if we have uh, septic tanks uh, and we have an outfall, so there will be high chances that the water creeks that run next to the septic tanks they may be. Uh, exhibiting some sort of, of pollution, right? And that is what we wanted to find out. But not only that, because it's kind of obvious, but also we wanted to see 
from analyzing the septic tanks, what is the load uh, of waste that is being produced in terms of uh, liters per day, but also in terms of uh, pollutions or concentration uh, per day. So in, in case that we will design a wastewater treatment plant, we know exactly what is the load that we will need to treat and what is the characterization of that, of that waste. All right, same thing we did for the drinking water. So for the drinking water, so this is the sampling plan that I was mentioning before. And I would like to focus on, on these four points over here on the creek, upstream the base, and as we move downstream or as we move down into the base. Eh? So points one, two, three, and four. So this was the point one. Also, we determined very, almost the same parameters. And I would like to focus on total coliforms, fecal coliforms, and, and of course, E. coli. So upstream the base, they were non-detectable. So the creek was super clean. But already when we move down to the first point that there may be already some affectation from the base, we started to see total coliform, but still the fecal coliforms were non-detectable. So we cannot conclude that there were a fecal contamination of the, of the creek. But then when we move down to the next point where we have the runoff of the septic tank for the dorms, more than 30, 40 persons could live here in the summer. So we already find not only total coliforms, but also fecal coliforms. So here it shows that indeed, you know, having septic tanks without any further treatment, it may have an impact. But also we measure some uh, ammonia there. So this is in, in microns per liter. So, and this is not in the septic tank, this is in the creek that receives a lot of a uh, water flow. So it's, it receives a lot of dilution. So the fact of finding some ammonia here, it's also really indicate uh, and, and also fecal coliform that indicates that that dilution is not uh, strong enough to, to dilute completely these parameters. Eh? So ammonia here, I just wanted to highlight that it's in micrograms of nitrogen per liter. Eh? If it was milligrams, it would have been too high. So it's 0.1 milligrams per, per liter, but, but it's still high. And then also what we were very surprised that at the mouth of the creek, also we find out uh, some uh, fecal uh, coliform there and also some ammonia. So even at here there are no septic tanks or even after the dilution effect is not uh, good enough for for so that we still uh, find out uh, those compounds. All right, so that's uh, also we measure the water quality in the kitchen, the water quality in the lakes, and there was super fine. We didn't find any uh, coliform or any uh, fecal coliform. We, we were just found in the creeks next to the septic tanks. But OK, so we wanted to see how the other bases uh, do. What, what do they have for the provision of water and sanitation? And first, we visit the bases that were around. So to go to the Chilean base, we pass through the Russian base that they have a, a, even a very nice uh, church uh, over there in the, in the Antarctic. But we didn't visit much the, the facilities, only the source of drinking water that they share with, with Chile. So, and this is the, the view uh, of, uh, of the Chilean base uh, over here. So, and uh, we have a very nice uh, visit to the base. We were received by the uh, general of the Air Force, that the Air Force is, is running the base and they, gave us a very nice presentation on how they handle the water and sanitation. And even we have some hot coffee and cookies that are always uh, welcome. And at the base there, they didn't have septic tanks. What they did, they provide these uh, uh, pipes for collecting the wastewater. These are kind of, you know, sewage, more like condominial sewage. So they have some slope and they have some insulation and that, you know, since the when you flush the toilet, the residence time of the wastewater is little, the, we providing that uh, insulation there and that slope is okay for avoiding avoiding that the that the wastewater gets frozen. The, these are the pipes, and similar pipes as you can see here are coming from from all the from all the little houses. There are some. Uh, cameras to to inspect the you know if the wastewater is is flowing properly. 
And here it goes to a wastewater treatment plant, but also they wanted to do something different and innova innovative. So, and they provide the wastewater treatment to, to that uh, wastewater using a worms. Mm? And so for the worms, they have these uh, wood chips and below these wood chips, there are worms that are degrading the, the organic uh, components of the wastewater. And uh, so after that, the wastewater is discharged, but then they have this kind of trap for for uh, trapping eh? uh, all the worms that that if not will escape escape with the wastewater, but these are the little worms that they have to to degrade the organic components of the wastewater. But also, they have another wastewater treatment plant that is more uh, modern or not modern. The other is modern. I would say more more standard. That is based on the conventional activated sludge uh, process. Um, and uh, so this is uh, how how it looks. Uh, all right, and this is the discharge of that wastewater treatment plant into the into the water. So what what is next? Uh, so what is next? Uh, now we wanted to we we find out that indeed having septic tanks is something is good, but it's not good enough if we really want to clean the, the wastewater before discharge. So now in the next uh, campaign over there, we are going to evaluate a portable a wastewater treatment plant that is named a membrane bioreactor system or based on membrane bioreactor technology to clean the, the wastewater in the in the base. So this is we will take a portable system as you see in the previous picture that it can be easily uh, transport to, to Antarctic by, by plane, and uh, it can be easily located next to the dorm. And this is the, usually the water quality that you get. At the left is the raw wastewater, and at the right is the clean uh, wastewater that that system produces. The system has some membranes that are submerged in the tank, so the wastewater is biologically treatment, treated and simultaneously is filtered by a microfiltration membrane. That, that explains such a a high water quality. So, and then we are going to place the system here next to the dorm. That is where most of the wastewater is produced. That, that is the main reason. So here is where we expecting to place the system. Of course, it will be covered uh, in a similar boost where the, the, the drinking water valves are, are located. And the idea is to put it here because also we see that here we have a slope, here we have another slope that can be combined to the other line of, of septic tanks that came in the west side of the base. So this is the east side, the west side, and everything can be combined here. So having the membrane bioreactor here, it's a good point that later on can be moved somewhere here and grab the two streams of wastewaters that are produce. All right, and almost just uh, almost finishing. We were there. It was very nice, but it was also uh, very nice to, to return back home. So in Antarctica, you have two moments that you are very uh, happy. It's the day that you arrive and the day that you depart to. <laughs> And, and that is true. They told us, us but we don't, didn't believe until, until that happened to us. And of course, getting there is not, you, you will not go in commercial planes. So you need to go in military planes. So this is a, a plane from the Air Force and Hercules plane from, from the Air Force. That is a, a, a cargo plane, pretty much. And uh, yeah, so we were very happy that the mission was over and we succeed having a lot of data and information. And we were hungry and very cold so it was good to to go back home all right so i would like to acknowledge uh, first uh, the technological university from uruguay that provide the the place the connections to to do the the research and also the um, the uh, the funding uh, then uh, also to the Antarctic Institute uh, in Uruguay that, of course, they are running the, the, the base and they allow us to, to do this. Uh, and also the, the team that, that were there, particularly uh, Beren and uh, Alejandra uh, from IHE and UTEC side, but also uh, uh, Richard, that uh, he was uh, staff from the Antarctic Institute that was also uh, supporting supporting that. All right, so that's it. And uh, we are now, I think, open to questions. Thank you. Hope you enjoy the presentation.
Um, okay. Okay, thank you very much, Hector, for your great experience and presentation. And I will have a tough time because there are a lot of questions. And I will start just for a simple one from Vicky Ferrer and Abdullah Adam, who asked, uh, which are the sizes of the tanks? And also, yeah, that is the first one. And also, if the tanks are lined from Sala. Again, sorry, the, the first. The first one was is the septic tanks are line. You can always also uh, open the, the chat with me and it will be easy. So the first question is, are the septic tanks line? And what are the sizes of the tanks? There you go. Now, I guess you can hear me. Yes. So the the sizes, it, it depends. It, it, they go between five and 10 uh, cubic meters. Uh, and the, the the tanks are already, it's not that they are built with, with membranes, so they, they already are fabricated for for that reason so that uh, septic tanks especially built as septic tanks so and they are uh, put it uh, underground they, they excavate and they put the tanks uh, over there for the septic tanks can i have a information about well this is a in the information of the size of the components that is a little bit the the same uh, question that we have have yeah Not connected. I cannot see the questions. Sorry, I cannot see the questions. Uh -huh. I cannot see the questions. Okay. A sludge is overflowing in some tanks. Is there any chance of pollution of the drinking water sources as it is an open source? Yeah, so the uh, actually the septic tanks, I would say, depend how big they are and how much time it's uh, provided for for settling the sludge. And there are no compartments in the tank, so they are very basic. It's pretty much a tank uh, th that is there. So when the flow is little, it allows enough time, and there is low uh, mixing. So the, the there is enough condition for the sludge to settle, and in that case, the the supernatant, what what it comes in the outfall of the of the tank, is is relatively okay. The thing is when the and particularly in the summer, so when there is a lot of usage of the showers and of the of the flush in the toilet, the the flow that the septic tank receives is too much for the volume of the tank, so the mixing it's considerable. And then what is coming, there is not much different what is the septic tank uh, and what is coming out uh, of the set of the septic tank. So that's more or less uh, how it works. We have another question uh, of Lita Istianti. From the water quality check from the setting tank, because from all domestic source come to setting tank, how's the results? And is it contaminated the lake for drinking water quality? How often people de slash tank? Yeah, so the, in well, f first question is the, the lake. The lake is way, way uh, upstream uh, of the base and there is nothing there not even in the summer you know so and in, in winter even you know less chances for for contamination so the lake is super pristine and uh, everything that we measured was perfectly uh, okay so in the chilean base and the russian base they are close to the airport and the so on the lake it doesn't look that clean to the to this other lake because you know there are more people around there are planes there are wastewater treatment plants so uh, both the chilean and russian 
bases, they do chlorination uh, of the water. And even if the Chilean base, they have an arrow system for that, that they take only, only for drinking water, but they cook and they shower with chlorinated water. That's the first uh, question. And the second question, I forgot, was on the septic tanks on the... No, the, the, this lodge, the, this lodge, yeah. So once a year in the summer, there is a, a Navy, a boat going there at where they take provisions and they take waste. And also they take the, the settled sludge with them. The thing is that if there is a settled sludge, because if the septic tanks are too little and the flow too, too high, the mixing is too much and there is not settled sludge, right? So that's why there is a, a lot of room for improvement there in the base. Thank you, Hector. And I have another question here, which is uh, Dr. Aludin asks if the septic tanks are made of steel or soil or, or concrete, which is a material. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, I don't know if I was able to see, I think from the presentation, there are some pictures that were were clear to see and others not that many. So they 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 ex they, they bought uh, tanks made of uh, uh, plastic. I think it's PVC the material. They dig the floor and they put the 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 tanks uh, underground. Eh? Uh, so they are not concrete, and that is what there is no lining or you know or membrane there because the 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 tanks were were bought uh, already uh, constructed, and uh, and they were put it in the uh, they they ex excavate and, and, and put the tanks underground. A lot of time. Is it grabbing sampling, and what's the size? No, is it grab is is it grab sampling? Is another question. And what is the destination of the sludge from the septic tank? Yeah, the second we already answered. So yes. this, our destination is it. It I mean we described that, that the sludge is picked up by the navy, and the destination is in the in the in the city. In it's a base of Uruguay, so it's in the city in Montevideo. I don't know exactly, but I guess it's in the some wastewater treatment plant. And the yeah the procedure that we did it was uh, we did grab samples, so we didn't do a continuous sample, but. You know, we think is is it it could be we we consider that it's representative uh, sample what what we got. Yeah, it's a po polyethylene tank. Uh, she won is comment on that, and yeah, it, it's right. It's a poly polyethylene tank. The material. Perfect. And here I have another question. There is a lot of sounds for your presentation. And here Guillermo Sinola asks, in the membrane system, you will have a lot of sludge. How you treat it? Yeah, that's a, a good question. Uh, thank you. So the for, for this system that we have, we design a compartment uh, in that pilot that that compartment is only allocated for a sludge treatment. So we are wasting a sludge uh, into the tank and then we are aerobically digesting the sludge. Uh, anyways, some sludge will be produced, but it will be way minor compared to the, the amount of waste that they are uh, dealing today. And then we were thinking on other solutions like a microwave system that we are doing for for sort of drying and in, not incinerating, but it's drying up to 90, 95% dry solids. But we are not there yet. And it will be a little energy demanding. Uh, they also have an incinerator <laughs> at the at the base where they get rid of waste, of kitchen waste or, or domestic waste. And probably that's also a way that we could do that. But it may have some uh, environmental impact to the atmosphere. I would say we will take some sludge and at the end the balance what we will be producing will be much less compared to what is produced right now so 
I think we should go to the last questions. Um, it's difficult to, to have them all, so please I will uh, invite you to write extra questions that cannot be addressed now to send it by email to Hector or to me. I will send it uh, to him. Um, in the membrane process, this was a one, no, yeah. In the membrane process, the most suitable technologies process in the Antarctica, would other more robust, less sustainable processes be a runner such as membrane and this one? Uh, RBC. Uh, well, uh, I think how it depends how that is seen. Uh, Usually, a membrane bioreactor is seen as a high-tech technology uh, that requires a lot of maintenance and operation. But based on our experience here at the Institute, that we work in very challenging uh, countries and situations, sometimes we find out that membrane bioreactors are less challenging than, than, than a conventional uh, treatment system. So I, I will challenge that first statement that the technology is, it, it requires a lot of maintenance and and uh, you know, and uh, maintenance and operation. I, I I disagree with that. So it's a it's a technology indeed, but but also a septic tanks to properly operate need some a, a t attention. So and I would say that it's a perfect system for a decentralized uh, context like like the one that we that we have here, uh, and and the driver is there. So it's decentralized. We need to produce a, a super high quality water for avoiding to contamination of that pristine environment. And also it opens possibility for reusing the, the water. Uh, not, of course, probably we, it, it could be reused for drinking water if we couple the MBR with RO system and something else, like some experiences that are they are doing in other countries, but probably we will not go that far. But it can be reused for flushing the toilet, for instance, and then we'll reduce considerable the, the amount of water that is that is consumed. And I would say RBC on MBBR could be even more challenging than, than, than the membrane bioreactor. So I would say, okay, probably if we compare membrane bioreactor with a more advanced septic tank, but anyways, the, the quality that we will get, we will never the same as the water quality treated effluent that we can get on a, on a membrane bioreactor. And also cost, there is an, another misconception that membrane bioreactors are super expensive and that is that, that is not uh, correct. So also, uh, price are are more and more affordable uh, every day. Good. Thank you very much, Hector. And uh, our time has arrived to to the day to the moment to say thank you very much to all of you to be part of this online seminar that it was extremely interesting. We have been in a continent and in a region that we usually, we are not informed of the situation. Thank you very much, Hector, for your presentation, our being available to be with us. Thank you to all the participants. And of course, I remind you that the presentation will be is recorded and it will be sent to all the persons who have been registered and you can also see it later and find it in the YouTube page of IET Delft. Our next uh, event or online seminar will be next month and we will have the pleasure to welcome a new alumni the, from the ones who have been graduated, received their diploma last April and all will be announced in the coming uh, weeks. Uh, if you have extra questions, do not hesitate to send it by us by email. So uh, I will send it to Hector and you can find all the contact details of Hector in the web page. But please be informed that there has been a hacker. So the web page, you will not uh, see it in the coming days from outside the Netherlands. I'm sorry. Thank you very much for your participation and willing to be with you in the next online seminar. Thank you very much.